Good morning, Jim Hodges here. Charlotte here. Charlotte is a two-year-old Boston Terrier, came in for our residency training program. Again, a lot for behaviors, a little bit obedience. Her obedience was pretty good. She's been with the trainer before. Uh, the big thing that we do, and, and what I believe in and I've said before, is that we can use obedience to address behaviors. Like uh, we teach obedience, and when we're teaching obedience, we teach her what's right and what's wrong in the moment. We do that through motivation, praise and consequence, okay? So when she jumps on us, when she pulls on us, when she picks up uh, a piece of paper off the ground, those are behaviors, okay? And those are behaviors, unfortunately, that she's learned over her life. And probably the jumping up on us when she was a puppy, she jumped up, she, uh, we petted her, we loved her. What do we do? We taught her how to jump up on us. Possibly, and I don't know if this is the case now, she picked up something off the ground and when she was little, we thought it was so cute, we laughed. She, hear, she heard that laugh and that's almost like a praise. And, and it starts to teach behaviors that we don't want. I tell people all the time, if you like it, praise it, put a word to it. If you don't like it, don't do anything that looks like that you could be uh, praising or confirming that behavior. That goes a long way. And then obedience will allow us to teach again in the moment what's right and wrong. Uh, when she's good, she's good. We praise, words, touch, treat, toy, positive emotion. When she's doing something we don't like, it's primarily words and touch. It can be avoidance and such, but for what we're doing and trying to address behaviors, it's words and touch, eh or no, and a tap of the leash. Uh, the tap is a consequence, it's a bite. You hear me communicate about bite, biting. Words are not enough. Dogs live in the world of touch. If you ever watch two dogs together, you understand that, okay? We bite. The bite is not designed to intimidate, dominate, break her spirit, hurt her, or have her fear you is to provide the level of consequence with the aforementioned obedience where she starts to understand what's right and wrong uh, to get her attention and move on. Every time we provide a consequence, when she's doing what we ask, we always come back and provide a modicum or a smaller degree of praise, but we give praise nonetheless. So I'm gonna go through the obedience. If she does something to relate to the behavior, fine. If not, we'll just figure out where we go. Is that right, Charlotte? Good girl. As I said, she's really obedient. Now she may mess up here. As I've told you before, and I tell anyone who will listen, there's only one perfect being to ever walk this earth, and that's Jesus Christ, okay? So when that happens, when she messes up or we mess up, that's part of what's going on, okay? We're imperfect. But what happens is when we do make a mistake or she makes a mistake, we take that next step the next time to improve on it, okay? And, and we're constantly trying to evolve into uh, a better place with us, with our dog, so that we form that nice pack. And she, she is comfortable and secure with who she is in her pack. And that's with you firmly as the leader. All right, sweetheart, good girl. Let's go. Hear that tone. Hi, the girl, our walking is uh, her right beside me. It's not her being outside and pulling. She is a puller, okay? So when she starts to pull, I don't care how slow we walk, if she starts to go out in front of us, as soon as she starts to go out in front of us, not after she's two or three feet in front, but as soon as she steps away from our side, we tap the leash and tell her, no, let's go. We go no and tap at the same time and say, let's go, okay? And the reason we're doing that is we're telling her as she starts to leave us, that's not what we want. We want her beside us. What happens a lot of times is dogs get out front and all of a sudden they can trip us up and we can fall and get hurt, okay? And that happens every day in the world, this country. And people have to go to the emergency rooms and, and maybe worse, hopefully it's just them having to rest for a few days. Let's go. Okay, so we're walking together. Right here, I'm slowing down. Add a girl. Why did I say add a girl there? Because she looked up at me to see what I wanted, okay? Good. So the tap of the leash on the next let's go is if she starts to move out here, I would tap right back to my side. That's a tap. I'm not gonna pull her back, I'm gonna tap back. Cause when I tap the leash, that's making her think about what she's supposed to do. When I pull the leash, I'm doing the work for her. Let's go. Sit. Good girl. Sit means sit. 
I ask her to sit. She has to hold that set until I release her, okay? We start everything on a loose leash. Say she got up from that set or did not sit, I would take the leash and tap five above her head, no, sit, and then come back and praise, okay? Our, our ability to praise, or what I believe we should do with praise, is praise at least 20 times more during the day than we bite. Let's go. Sit. Good girl. Now, if I wanted to give her a treat right now, I can. I use treats a lot in the beginning uh, to teach and, and tease and lure up my dogs to do what they want to do. After they start to understand, I back off on treats. That doesn't mean you have to. If you want to give her treats, give treats. Just don't let her be working for the treat. She's working because you are the authority in her life. Let's go. And we have cats around this morning, but guess what? We're going to deal with it. If she messes up, that's real life, and, and we're going to address it. She did. I don't know if she saw. Oh, yeah, she did. All right, watch. When she looks over again, sit. Good. Down. That is the down from the side. When I asked her to down, she's to lay down, okay? She needs to hold that down, just like I did with uh, the sit, move around or what have you. That's how we're gonna move to off leash and her obeying us from further and further away. The beautiful thing about me telling her to sit her down is I know I'm gonna ask her that command uh, before I ask it. And when I ask, I'm gonna be prepared to make the uh, correct movement if she does it. If she does it, I'm gonna praise. If she doesn't, I'm gonna tap the leash, okay? Normally, I tell people to tap the leash towards the ground if they can. If not, just a little tap out in front of the direction you want her to down in. Okay? Sit. Good girl. I almost messed up there. Praise. How did I almost mess up? If you go back and look at the replay, uh, I told her to sit. And she was getting... Good girl. Break. Atta girl. Yes, ma'am. And I'll talk about that break here in just a second. But if you go back and look at the video there, ah, no smelling, good girl. I don't like dogs to smell the ground when they're on my time, okay? Uh, running around the yard, being a dog is one thing, but when we're working, I want her to watch me. Plus you have the safety factor of her picking up something that she shouldn't. Okay, now back back up just a second. Uh, I told her to sit from down and she came up and started to sit. I started to praise her and I actually praised her before she had completed the sit, and it started to slow her down. Mistake on my part. What I really should have done is only start to praise her or praise her after she had completed the command. I hope that makes sense. Because when I tell her good girl and she hadn't come up all the way in the sit, she said, okay, that must be what he wants. I can deal with that. I don't have to go all the way in the sit. That's wrong, unless that's what you want. Hope that makes sense. Anybody who has a question about it, just let me know. Uh, send me an email, okay? You noticed I went, break. I broke, I stepped away from her. And what I'm doing is trying to teach her that I'm the center of the universe. Break means you don't have to work anymore, okay? You're released from that command. She still can't pull me on a leash. She still can't uh, pick up something off the ground that I don't want her to, okay? She still has to have a, a uh, ability to conform to, to the pack, okay? But that's it. She's fine. She can do whatever she wants after it. If we're walking in a neighborhood and we come up to see somebody, I want her right here beside me. We can tell her to SIT or do something to begin with. That's not a big deal. But if I tell a dog to sit when we're walking in a neighborhood, as soon as she sits, I'm going to break her because all I care about her is to be comfortable right here. If I give a command, sit down, come, whatever, she has to do it. I have to make her do it. And ideally, we're gonna put her in a position to succeed much more often than we're gonna put her in a, a position to fail when we're learning. Let's go. So you saw the DOWM from the side like that. That's the hand signal from the side. Sit. Down, that's the down from in front. Good girl. I'm gonna reach down and pat her. Sit. Good. You notice I went right back to what I screwed up on earlier. Right, let's go. And she did well. So when our dog does make a mistake, or if we make a mistake, it's important to come back to it during that session if you can, and uh, try to do it a couple of times consecutively correct if you can do it. Okay, all right, sweetheart. If you listen real carefully, we had a cat. 
I guess the cat is uh, freaking out the squirrels and you listen good, you'll hear the squirrels. She's looked over there a couple of times, but she's pretty much tuning it out. She's smelling other dogs. Now, place this, she can get on the bed, lay down, sit down, stand up, read a book. I don't care what she does as long as she stays on the bed. This includes when other people come. But guess what? In the beginning, she has to learn to stay on the bed with you. Then once she learns to stay on the bed for you in a place command, somebody comes in, she may start to pop off. We're gonna tap that leash back to the bed and tell her no play. Each scenario, each environment uh, may be a totally new command for her. So what do I mean by that? We tell her to place, nobody's around, she's there for an hour or two, no problem. Somebody walks in the room, she's ready to pop up and go see them. Us as the leader, us as the trainer, needs to be aware that if this is something she's done in the past, she's gonna possibly do again. And as soon as she starts to make that action to go off, we're gonna bite and tell her no, play. We don't want her getting all the way to the people. We want to teach them success. And the further she gets away, the uh, more difficult it is could be for her to understand what we were trying to communicate with that. This cat season, this uh, last few videos, I don't know if you noticed, we've had cats around. Used to have them all the time. I sort of missed it. We're getting them back. Okay, Frank. Sit. Good girl. All right, the next thing on the, hey, we're gonna do this a little bit different. Come on, girl. Okay, sit. The next thing is the C-O-M-E command. When I ask her to come on leash, I want her to come up and sit in front of me, okay? Uh, sort of like the break command. When I give her the come or the break, I always bring my hands in between my legs as a target. This is on leash. She comes, she sits, at a girl. And now she has to hold that sit until I release her. Let's go. Or go to another command. If I wanted to, I could give her a treat. Now I'm gonna give her a treat now of a different version of the come. So the come command on leash, and we do want to practice that to teach it off leash, is she comes to you and she sits right in front of you. Now when she's off leash, and she's a little toy crazy too, so you can use a toy, you can use a treat, you can use your voice. But she's out running around in the house and we do everything inside to begin with as we're trying to move off leash. I'll go, Charlotte, hey, look what I got, come. Good girl, that's a good girl, great. So I got her attention, I showed her the treat or toy, and just for example, or for giggles, say she didn't come to me. Well, guess what, I lost nothing there. Because all I did was say, Charlotte, look what I got. If you want it, come get it. That was innuendo. That wasn't the real words. But when she, if she decided not to, I didn't lose the command. But when she decided to come to me, off leash, five feet, 10 feet, 20 feet away, and she decides she wants that treat or that toy, I'm gonna bring my hand here, and if she's committed to coming to me, I'm gonna tell her to come then. Why would I do that? Because I am uh, attaching come to a very happy state of mind that she's in. And it's only gonna resonate more and more in the future that coming is a wonderful thing for mom and dad, okay? Having said that, I would never tell her to come and do anything that might be a negative. That could be hooking her up on a leash, putting her up in a crate, providing a consequence, anything like that off leash. If I'm gonna do a consequence for the come, it's gonna be on leash, and what it would be would probably be a little tap like that too, okay? I don't even like that, but there are times when you need to do it, and you'll know it if you ask her to come and she doesn't come, we'll tap for her to come. Hope that makes sense. Let's go. Good girl. The next thing that we teach her, and this was really hard for her, and she can jump up in the bed, okay, was to load up. All right? Come on, sweetheart. Okay, load up. And that's to teach her to get on furniture if we want. Good girl. Let's go. Okay, to get in a car, anything along those lines, okay? That's just load up. Good girl. When she gets up there, I'm gonna release her. Now, one thing about her is she likes to pick up things and she likes to play ball. She doesn't leave it, she doesn't give it back. But primarily, when she picks up things in the house, she'll take off and start to run with it, okay? It's not a leave it, it's not enough, it's not a drop. To me, if she picks up something we don't want her to pick up, it's a no. And we provide a consequence and tell her no. 
If she starts to run away, how do we fix that? We have a long line so that if she's faster than us, all we have to do is get close enough to step on the leash. And then when it pops, we tell her no. And she says, whoa, look at them. They've got better control than I thought. She uh, drops it and we can tell her good girl, but we don't tell her to drop it. Let's go. Okay, so uh, I talked about the sit and I talked about down, stay. Now, notice I told her down earlier without stay. When I told her stay right then, that means she doesn't have to focus on me. We're not working right now. Pack your bags, you're gonna be there for a while. That was the open palm. You notice I did down from in front, down from the side. Open palm, I don't care if she looks at the cat, I don't care if she goes to sleep, I don't care if she chews a bone, I don't care if she smells the ground or even rolls on her side. Down stay means pack your bags, you're gonna be there a while. That's normally at least two minutes for me. But when we start to teach this, the next phase of that right, is pretend like we're in a room in a house and that's the door, okay? We can start using stay to become a room command. So I'm walking out the door, I'll go stay. And then I'll walk on out the room, I can do whatever. She can do whatever she wants if you listen to the logic of the downstay in that room as long as it's not a bad behavior but I want her to stay in that room or stay out the door when you're getting ready to go outside for something. It will stay. So I'll do that as she comes through the door. I'll take the leash, tap back, no, 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 stay, and then immediately walk back. Good girl. I always praise after a bite. Remember, not as much as if she did it right the first time, but I praise to reaffirm this is what we want. Good girl. Girl. I did that turn, that was me being a dog trainer there to see if she was gonna focus on me with the cat crossing the driveway. The last thing is the heel. I'll be honest with you, only time I use the heel command with my dogs is when I'm showing off. Let's go is plenty good for me, okay? But the heel command is typically when we have a dog right here by our side, we have a imaginary box, okay? Her job is to stay in the box, my job is to keep her in the box and we go heel and she's right here. Or maybe just a tad back, but I don't want her in front of me. When I stop, she sits automatically and she holds it, okay? I'm gonna do it now. Uh, we can do it from the stand up, from the sit down, it doesn't matter. Just keep in mind that if we started teaching a dog, your dog at home, uh, a heel from the stand up, then we go to start from the heel, that will be a different situation, different environment. Right? Good girl, see how the little tap? That was a very little tap, okay? A level of about a half. It's getting frisky this time of year, but that's okay. That's why we're here training, okay? To teach our dog to handle any situation that we're the leader, okay? So if you go back and listen 30 seconds ago, she was not in a command. The only thing that, the reason I gave her a consequence is because she was starting to chase, okay? And if she played out to the end of the leash, I tapped it. And if you go back, you'll see she stopped right off. So let's go. Sit. So instead of out of the stand, I'm gonna do it out of the sit since we're doing this. Now this is gonna be a test with her looking over here, but she's gotta do it. All right, Charlotte, heel. I stop, she sits, she holds it. Good girl, and that's the heel. Good, heel. Watch what happens when I step away. She comes right back to the box. Good girl. Stop, sit, a girl, good girl. So there was a time that she would be completely batty over this, okay? She doesn't look unhappy. She's still able to check things out, but she's not uh, giving in to her desires of the chase and run, which is part of her adrenaline and part of the reason she's here. I'm really proud of her right now. Okay, so at the end of the hill, she's in a sit. She's having to hold the sit. She's checking out. I'm gonna take her away from that focus again. Heel. Good. Turn. She comes right back in. Now you notice when I did the turn and when I stepped out, I stepped out and walked forward. I turned and kept walking forward to give her a chance to get back beside me. But she can't read my mind. She can do what we want, but she still has to respond to what's going on. Good girl, Brent. Atta girl. 
So I'm gonna give her a treat, and the last thing I'm gonna tell you is I don't give treats for nothing, okay? We always ask our dogs to do something. It doesn't matter what it is. When we're doing a training, we always try to stop on a positive note, okay? Sit. Good girl. Treat, pet, love. I'm so happy. Good, great. Good girl. So that's it. That was a lot, I believe, if I go back and look at the time on this. But I just wanted to try to explain things. Uh, you know, my name is Jim Hodges, jimhodgesdogtraining.com. We have Charlotte here. She's been a great girl. She needs a leader. You've got to step up and be the leader. Humans are the limiting factor. It's my job to teach or your dog trainer's job to teach, and it's your job to do. 98, 99% of the time, that's all we need. My approach to training is different than a lot because I believe in leadership and obedience to address even the worst of behaviors, okay? And just keep in mind, most behaviors are shaped by life and by humans, unfortunately, or the lack of humans. Thank you so much. 336-945-3232. God bless. Bye. Come on.